behaved. So welcome to this special program on the discovery of San Xingdui. And 30 years ago, the relics of San Xingdui was discovered for the first time. And we found a lot of uh, astonishing bronzeware and copperware, which astonished the whole world. And after 30 years, we discovered another six pits. The artifacts, which have been lying underground for thousands of years, are unveiling their looks to the viewers all across the world. So today, let's take another look at the pit. First, pit three, which has drawn a lot of attention. And inside this uh, pit, we found a lot of uh, bronzeware, for example, vessels and utensils. And there is a new shape, which is similar to a human figure. And this is the first time that uh, such a style of uh, Bronzeware was discovered, and we also have a bronze utensil and vessel discovered in P3. And in P number four, we found more than 30 elephant tusks. And yesterday, one complete piece was extracted and was transferred to the uh, experimental uh, lab. And we also extracted a piece of uh, jade tablet. And P5 is the smallest, but we found a lot of. Uh, gold and golden files in that pit. And uh, the archaeologists are preparing to extract these golden files. And earlier, one golden facial mask was discovered here. And this is the largest of its kind ever excavated in China. And the archaeologists, they are repairing and finding the missing part of the golden facial mask. And now let's go to pit number six. And we have a wooden box. Its length is equivalent to the width of the pit. And right now, the archaeologists are cleaning this wooden box, and we may expect to see its real look. And now let's go to pit number seven. And there are some uh, connection between pit number seven and pit number six. And right now, in pit number seven, the archaeologists are still cleaning the earth. And pit number eight is the largest. We have found some um, burned earth and also some beams for construction purposes. And uh, two days ago, we found out a stone tablet. According to metallic scanner, we may expect a lot of uh, metal pieces buried in P number six. P three, four, five have entered the level of artifacts, and in P number three, we have encountered a lot of artifacts. In P number four, and we are about to enter the layer of ashes or the layer of artifacts. Today, the archaeological work is underway, and uh, Zhu Guangxuan, my colleague, will bring you the latest. So now I will hand it over to you, Guangxuan. All right. Welcome to San Xingdui Relic Site. We have a lot to expect today. For example, P number four and P number five will extract those golden files. And we are also going to analyze the uh, fibron in P number four. And uh, yesterday, we also uh, found a wooden box. And what is inside that wooden box? And we're going to have the answer today, and today we have with us Wang Wei, who is the director of the Chinese Academy of Archaeology, and also we have a lecturer, a head of the team uh, for P number 5 through 7, uh, Dr. Ma. So we have entered into a very special state, and we have a lot of discoveries every day. We may also have many questions, and this is mind-blowing to see so many discoveries every day, and this is rarely seen in my career, and it's a privilege to witness these new discoveries with you. Good afternoon. I'm Ma Yunchao. I'm from the School of Archaeology of Sichuan University, and it's a great pleasure to join Dr. Wang Wei and uh, uh, to win is these discoveries and P number three, we have uh, three uh, sacrificial uh, pits, number five, six, and seven. After some um, preparatory work, these pits uh, 
at different stages of excavation, and later I will give you more details. So, all right, we are going to bring you the latest later. Thank you very much. Since yesterday, what are the new discoveries in San Xingdui? And now let's connect, get connected to Zhao Jing. So Zhao Jing, tell, tell us what is going on at your front. So we are still reporting in the uh, structure covering the pits in San Xingdui relic site. And you can see that uh, the work is still underway. And from the golden file that we encountered, we have extracted some very heavy artifacts. For example, from pit number three, we extracted a very large bronze vessel, and our archaeologists are using 3D printing to work out a protective layer for that bronze figure. And yesterday, it was transferred to the Cultural Relic Preservation Center. In addition to that, archaeologists found out that there are some new artifacts including one big bronze ware that has not unveiled its full shape to the public. It also includes a jade ware, and today you can see that our archaeologists are still operating on that platform. And yesterday we un unearthed a very radiant and glowing um, piece, and uh, from pin number five we extracted a uh, two sculpture and the archaeologists are using microscope to analyze this small tooth sculpture, and they found a lot of very delicate patterns on the surface of this sculpture. They also extracted some debris of uh, elephant tusk, and they are going to see whether those debris and pieces can match together into one giant piece. Also yesterday, from P number four, we unearthed the elephant tusk with the length of 1.3 meters. After buried under the ground for thousands of years, and since given the fact that it was born, it's very difficult to preserve those uh, elephant tusks. And uh, we have uh, found 36 elephant tusks, which will pose great difficulty for excavation on a later date. So this is a dynamic process. And I was told by the archaeologist that they are going to unearth some golden ware from P number four and number five. And also in one of the pits, we encountered a wooden box. What is the wooden box for? What was it holding thousands of years ago? So we extracted some earth from the wooden box, and this afternoon we are going to analyze the fibron of the earth. This will tell us whether the wooden box was used to accommodate some silk products and silk cloths. And they are still cleaning the earth, and in pin number eight, they have already conducted a metallic scanning. Through that scanning, they have encountered some very strong responses, and so that is why they made a decision to further dig up the earth, and they may expect some very major discoveries. So we are going to stand by and bring you the latest. So we have a lot of expectations for this afternoon, so thank you very much, Zhao Jing, for bringing us the latest. So in this round of uh, excavation, we are all paying attention to one of the key areas, uh, which is the uh, Cultural Relic Preservation Center that is near the San Xingdui Relic Center. So what, are, what is going on at the center? And now let's get connected to Jian Quan. So tell us the latest about the uh, repairing and maintenance of those relic pieces. So more and more artifacts have been transferred here to this Cultural Relic Preservation Center over the past 24 hours. This center is kept very busy. And yesterday, you saw that we extracted a very large bronze vessel, and it was transported here. And yesterday, we uh, wrapped off its protection layer, and you can see that uh, the workers they are cleaning the earth attached to this bronze piece, and though it's very solid, but after buried underground for thousands of years, they have to be very delicate and meticulous in cleaning the earth. And yesterday, 
We showed you that after the elephant trust was transported here, the workers have uh, basically cleaned the earth, and uh, we are still well, we are still uh, we are still guaranteeing the uh, mixture uh, the moisture of the elephant husk. And uh, so right now, the elephant husk is uh, frozen in the lab. Uh, later, they will be transferred to other places for further analysis. What I'm, what I'm going to tell you today is that after some basic repairing work, we are going to accommodate and show you how to uh, repair the golden files extracted from P number five. And we may also have experts to witness the key part of our work. All right, this is the latest from my center. Thank you very much, our correspondent from the Restoration Center. So we can tell like every day we have seen something new in DEA discovery and restoration. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, and this is our special coverage on the Sanxing Dui new discovery. And now let's go to the on-site to give our studio there. Right. Welcome to our studio here. This is right behind this is Sanxing Dui in the pits. And we just near the A4 cabins here. This is excavation, the A cabins. And we talk about our ancestors actually delivered and developed their history here. And this is also experienced the A rich, the resources, although right now it's covered by the A thousand of years of the A earths. But actually, with our work, we can see clearly the A shape of the original look and I hope we can bring that original look and feel to our viewers. Right now this is the number five, six and seven pit. So would you please talk more 
the a progress right now going on. We can tell actually gold here is really shining, and this is peak number five. Uh, but right now we're coming to the 60 to 65 centimeters underneath, and we can tell it right now. You can see from the color, uh, so uh, the a gold foil and a gold wear. We talk about the uh, before we have the bird shape, the gold foil, and also the a different shape, and also the biggest one that's the, our gold mask. And so far, we can see actually filled with different pieces of gold and foil, and we also can see that the DA jade and also the a the portraits. And for pattern number six, we're also coming to the 90 centimeters underneath, and you can see this one is a jade, I believe. And for this, actually, we keep that moisture. You can see that moisture we actually keep this kind of situation for the average, actually. So based on the CT scan, actually help us to understand exactly where we are. I believe you look at this is so beautiful. You look at the color is very vivid. This is CD scan. I believe this is the on the top. So that's a date. That's last year, December twenty third. And this one, let's look at the date. I believe that's one part finished. That's December twenty eighth, and we also went down a little bit. Deeper that date this year, January 4th. But we couldn't really see a lot of things underneath. But look at this one, actually, you could see that the gold mask, a very astonishing piece, as January 12th. And you could see, based on this, you can see more gold foil that's really shining. And earth. And this is January 31st. And you can see more here. I believe this is the most updated one, the CD scan. You could see that with all these developments, you could actually feel the same exciting with the archaeologists back then. So the latest one is the March 6th. And this is the one piece of the gold for you. And you see, actually, there's a little hole in the middle. We could really tell the size, but actually, it should be really, really tiny. Just around the, uh, one to two centimeters. But you can still is all filled with these kind of pieces of gold for you. And also, so the, a hole in the middle. Uh, they look at actually is filled inside the whole pit, not really layered or overlap each other. So we could tell that maybe this is something actually before decorated on um, the clothes. So you could see maybe that's their, the decoration under coats. Or the uh, accessories. So I believe this one, you could tell it just the, a gold pit because for the other pit, I really not have these large quantity of a gold pit. And also we talk about the jade. Actually, look at the shape of the jade I found here in pit number five. That also could be the decoration purpose. And this is another piece. So look at that this is the, a really nice shape. So that's basically, that's accurate. <coughs> Or maybe that's a piece of ivory, we believe. And we talk about ivory is not really in our common sense, the really large size of ivory. So we talk about that really maybe that the original purpose for the decorations are already broken in different pieces for decoration purpose or that for other functions. So that's not really in the really large, big size as we know defined as the ivory. So maybe that's for the other decoration or for the ivory made products. And look at this is what we call the jade too. So actually, you can use the uh, rope to hang it on your clothes. So back to the uh, ancient age, actually, you have that rules, regulations based on what kind of the uh, decoration you can put on your clothes. So like how the ancient people really like peer 
pole around the jade. I believe this should be really quite a technology and from different size, it should dig the hole. Of course, back then, there's ma no metal instrument to help them. So I believe this is, could be really difficult for them. I believe the same level as we digging a hole in the mountains. So let's say, judging from right now what we found here, this should be really the a higher class. People are buried here because we also found a gold mask here, so maybe the a wardrobe here is the really nice one. The look at it. this is maybe. I found that this the a cob, this the a cob here. So I believe it, this is cob, or maybe that's also the a gold foil. So that look at the sickness. We not really know right now. We need to do the further cleaning work. So right now we not really see the whole piece, the whole shape. So we cannot really tell from now. But you can see we can see the burn mark, or that maybe just the mud. So it's burnt already melt. So luckily it's not burnt, because we actually knew that for the gold mask it burnt, so we lost half of the mask. So we tell this is really with great value, and we look at the people that wearing or for the worship, they should be really the high the standard ritual. So there should be the high officials, so also the a, or the a highest priest actually warned the a gold and or jade accessories on the closet, and we can see another one. This may be all different in different pieces. So look at the different pieces of the gold for you, and we can see that maybe the uh, avarice and maybe the avery coverings. So we could see whether we can restore back to its original look. So we talk about maybe it should be a cup or it's a black one. That's the, maybe the ivory that burnt. Mm. Mm. So let's see, not in the a round shape, but because we cannot really judge in from this angle to tell that the shape is round or the other shape. So we need to wait for the whole cleaning work So let's take a guess. So let's say if that's the whole piece of closet, right now it's then broken in different pieces. So we can see all these different the pieces of the a gold foil. So we need to wait for the whole repairing work finished to see whether that all different pieces right now come back resembled to the one large piece of clothes or coat. So we talk about the ivory, maybe it's the covering or the a sculpture, because we already found the unearthed the a sculpture or the a ivory covering day with different the a patterns. So we talk about hit number one and two, actually just found an ivory. So this one we believe compared to the other pit, it should be belong to the people that was a higher hierarchy. And we actually found some a brown ware, but quite smaller size. And the leaf, this is another piece of jade, or jade ware. So maybe it's one piece or two. So, so far, actually, judging from the angle we saw, it's maybe four pieces already. So we talk about right now in this cabin, and Mr. Ma, actually, the AP leader, or the cabin leader, you're actually in charge of the more piece compared to others. So the people in blue, as another manager here, or the team leader, so piece number seven, actually, you could see that we see a really show is a deserve. And they have a different logo or the slogan on them. So it's very easy to tell that's actually their name. 
So we could really tell their their DEA characters or the personalities. So they bring some fun in addition of this exciting project. So right now we we'll still do the cleaning work and also to tidy it up. Of course, you look at here is marked different numbers, and for a different peat, actually the earth, the or the sand inside is quite different compared to the sand outside. So actually we need to be really careful. And this is peat number seven and the peat number six. Actually, we talked about this. Peat number seven. It was the uh, original one, and then the peat number six actually was the peat that the uh, digs later, and also took some area of the peat number seven. So we talk about it's like a book. Actually, we read from the last page to the uh, front cover. So that is also one that we started to do our work from peat number seven, and then back to peat number six. Mm. So this is the 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 the对，然后现在看到的就是这个木箱子的一个特性。这种这个木箱子是很有趣，里面没有发现过，所以可能带了无线的遐想。有没有？因为有没有可能是带上，比如说木棍、男人的，或者是如果不是木棍，是不是有可
uh, music instrument. But on one side, it's very similar, but on the other side, it's pretty strange. So when we encounter a piece of artifacts, we have to delve into many different possibilities and then put them to test and analysis. So archaeologists, they have to look into chemistry and also maybe culture. They may not be able to realize their uh, possibilities that they have imagined through analysis, but they have to have this kind of imagination in the first place. So again, this is the old box in P number six. You can see that so we are taking samples from the soil of the wooden box. Those are the sample boxes. And they have to put different samples in different boxes, and those are uh, different soil and earth samples. And we are putting them into different boxes according to the color of the earth. Through measuring and analysis, and we may find what the elements are contained in the earth. And those are the file paper we use to extract the earth, and this can minimize our impact on the environment here. So, how difficult it is to preserve this wooden box? It is very difficult because traditionally we saw a lot of wood sticks to support us, but right now you have removed all the wooden sticks. Why is that? You can see that we are still using some wood sticks, and the first step is to attach a layer of file paper. And on top of the file paper, we have a plastic film, and then a towel, and then a wet tissue. So it's four layers. So this is the sampling work going on. So we have to extract the earth inside the wood box. So it is just for this layer and this very small area. Alright, why we do sampling? Because we have to understand what is contained in the wooden box. For example, silk products, and we have to look at the content of uh, fibrone. So what is the result of this analysis? And now let's go to the lab and get connected to Zhao Jin. All right, I'm at the emergent analysis lab of the Sanxin Tui relic site and our workers. Uh, analyzing the contents of the earth, and you can see that so we have some soil samples at the centrifuge tube. So this earth is from the mysterious wood box from P number six, and each and every each and every day we take a lot of earth samples from the wooden box. Why? Because we want to understand. What was the wooden box for thousands of years ago? And right now, you can see that our workers are analyzing the contents of uh, uh, fibrone. You can see that our researcher has sampled six different layers of earth and put them into six different centrifuge tubes. And this is designed as so to make the result more accurate uh, in this round of excavation at Sanxin Dui. In P number 3 and P number 4, we have identified some of the fat from uh, silk, and we also find some remains of silk cloth because it's a very tiny samples, so it's very difficult for us to tell whether it is silk and cloth or woven silk or some other silk product. The analysis is still going on, and you can see that we have completed the test for four samples, and there are two more coming, and we have to stand by and wait, and later maybe we can have some feedback from our researchers. There's a lot of questions with regard to what the wooden box used to accommodate. There's a lot of tests and analysis going on, and uh, so this is the last centrifuge tube that is working on, and uh, we are holding our breath and uh, expect the answer in a few minutes. Now, 
其实我们也可以看到这个试纸上面呢，是有这样的一个条纹。我们也来请教一下现场的这个。我们上面呃，究竟是什么样的一个条纹上面？呃，究竟是什么样的一个条纹上面？呃，究竟是什么样的一个条
6,000 years ago, maybe there were not many human beings living in the ancient Sioux Kingdom, and it's highly likely that the worm and the silk uh, product were transported to this place from the northern part of uh, Yellow River. So talking about the ancient silk, uh, ancient Sioux uh, Kingdom, you have to talk about silk, because the very first technique taught by the king was how to cultivate uh, silkworms. So now let's move on to the side again. Uh, so what is she doing right now? So she is uh, digging up the soil, filled in the wooden box. So you can see that uh, she is using a very tiny shovel. So this is like a dental hospital. Dental doctor is using small tools like this to dig up the soil bit by bit, and it's not uh, missing any part of major discoveries inside the wooden box. So let's uh, continue with this job, and uh, we are finding a lot of uh, major discoveries here, and uh, I hope that our workers can continue engaging in very meticulous work, and maybe find some of the mysteries from those details. Stay tuned. Thank you. All right, welcome back. This is our special coverage regarding the new discoveries in Sanxingdui, and this is Beijing Studio. Just now, we just will go to the A, A pit number five and to see about the very shiny gold A foil. And we we'll talk about before that maybe the A decorating courses, but where is that piece of courses? Or we we'll talk about where we could find that textile of the course. Uh, though we actually right now didn't find any DA4 brown from the a wooden box from pit number six, but actually we found we did find some the a silk or textile from the other pit. So this is pit number three, and this is just next to the a brown mask. So that's near to the ears of the mask. We found in a very small portion of the a soil you actually found these trays of the textile or the a silk products you could see actually you could see really that the a texture and actually is less than the a one millimeters so this is really tiny size how we could find it so we talk about after is the a decade or the rotten development the a color could change so we talk about the yellow a cellul actually right now changed to the dark or black color and that could tell that it's a higher possibility to contain that fibron we talk about we use a different DA material and different methods to test whether that exists of the a fibron. So judging from the color, actually how about to see whether this should maybe with the potential or not. And then through our laboratory work, we will found this. So in page number four, actually in different depths of the a ash layers, actually we found indeed there had the a silk or the textile existed before. And we compared to the a excavation we got before from pit number four, actually could tell it's even clearer from its look. So we talk about right now we can one thing for sure is that in pit number three we had this kind of the a silk products before. Then it depends on the archaeologists on site to see whether we can find that a surprise from the pit. Actually, for a country, China actually the uh, one of the uh, leading country and the earliest one actually to cultivate silk worm, and we had a big development in this regard. So based on the excavation results, so we talk about the a uh, the a uh, later age of the a uh, stone uh, new stone. We already had the the uh, silk worm breeding, and we found the a uh, half of the a uh, silk worm chrysalis, and actually we found this is around the a 1.36 centimeters long and 1.04 centimeters wide and we got this half size of the silk wound the a chrysalis and the young shell culture that's around five five thousand to six thousand years ago and this provides the a solid evidence for us to understand the 
silk wound braiding culture before. And we also found that in the previous excavations, we also found the a residual of the a silk and we talk about that also embedded the silk into the yarn and I believe this is the earliest DA discovery we got so that's emphasized and also verified that five thousand years ago the Chinese ancestors already produced silk and in Shuanghui Shu Ruin we also found this the a bone covering actually this is the a silk warm shape so with a 6.4 centimeter lawn and less than the one centimeter wide, and this is also the earliest carving or sculpture we found. You could look at this is exactly the really vivid shape, like the a silk worm. So we could tell that this is maybe that producing silk. So the uh, right now the silk worm right now. Is we look at the whole shape is producing silk so we could tell actually back then in that culture age already had that the a family or household culture to do that the a silk worm cultivation and around 4,000 years ago we also had a lot of the a foundings including the is a ceramics and also the a silk belt and silk rope and from the in March to the June 2005 we had a third excavation work in the Dui Shan, Yang, the ruins, and we also found a well-preserved silk belt. So we talk about how we found these well-preserved the excavation, how we depend is the cotton or the silk or other textile materials. Actually, in the Silk Museum, we found that the a remaining pieces. So our correspondent right now in the A Hangzhou, so this is the A Silk Museum, and we talk about because to protect the silk, and we don't want to really use a strong light to decorate the whole room, so that is why you can see we have not really the big lighting here. And this one just in front of us, that's the A piece of the A Silk we mentioned before, and how we can define that actually talk about the age of this silk ruins and we use this this the a silk thread that's around the four thousand four hundred to four thousand two hundred years ago and for the a textile products actually they had a requirement on the sample sizes it should be at least equal to 100 grams actually talk about the foundings back then our excavation actually is quite small actually we also test at the same time the a, a grains or the a rice. So we are used together to talk about whether that should have the a silk in this content. And we also talk about why we can judge from the a black color that should tell that included a silk inside. And you look at this is the whole production processing going on. Because back then we know there is no the a chemical silk inside that is just all the a natural silk so, so we look at we should touch it and feel it so judging from the, its look judging from appearance and look at the elasticity and basically but judging from the look and touch we can see whether the a textile and also look at the a fiber is elastic or resilient so we look at the a silk warm Look at this should be really resilient and also the A should produce around one thousand meter long according to the a nature of the silk. And for the cotton actually you can smell that burning smell and for the silk shrink first and falling into the a pieces or into that the carbon size or the carbonated pieces. So we look at, we don't want to be a bring the damage to the a excavation, so we use the a microscope. So this is how we could see that this is cotton fiber, and we look at the a turnings and showing that the a round shape. And the a flag actually with the different the a angle, and this is the a woven, and this is the a silk. So we look at this actually in the, the a triangle shape. So this is how we judge it um, with the help of the microscope.
青铜器和金饰品啊，是三星堆出土文物的大户。So the A bronze ware and also the gold ware are actually the A largest and earth findings we got. We don't talk about actually so far we got four. The A gold mask, and right now we show you three out of that four. So one without gold mask, the other two with the gold mask on. So look at these three. The A brown hat, you found some dissimilarity. And look at the eyes, actually quite similar to the one, not similar to the one known the findings from the San Xingdui. Actually, this look at their eyes. It's not a buckling eyes. Actually, just with that triangle shape. And just look at their mouth. It's a, a horizontal, like one line here. And also look at their ears. They have a pierce on. So we talk about actually not only just one pierce. Look at this with the three pierce on each. So maybe they wear the earrings before. We don't know whether it's true or not. It's because we just live three thousand years after their existence. We believe with more works going on, we could verify our guesses. Of course, there are some similarities among these three, but we also show that they have different DNA features. For this one, you look at on the top. Look at their hairs. Actually, is different with the other two, and the other two one with the a flat hat top, another with the a curved hat. So maybe that's verified that someone wear hat, some not wear hat. Maybe there's different social hierarchy, so that also judging from their hats or judging from their hairstyles, I believe with more evidence and earth, we could get more understanding of this ancient tribe. And we found a lot of gold products because gold is quite soft, so they should unfold it, and we can identify 100% sure that which the award belong to is the. Independent one, or should be adhere to something else. For San Xingdui, 35 years ago, in the gate number one, we found one of the gold stick or the gold vessel, the ward. So actually, very beginning, we saw that this is a gold belt. During the restoration work, the archaeologists found inside the the wood elements found inside that wound. So when we unfolded 100 percent, we found on the one side that there are a 46 centimeters, is a three patterns on. As you look at this is the pattern carved on that golden wand, and inside it also had the a carving of the bird and fish shape. So you look at this. This is the a pattern that on that golden wand. We don't know exactly how that pattern conveyed what kind of message, or this is maybe used for the a priest or represent for the people buried. That's also because a triggered a whole debate. So this time maybe we also kind of build the a whole round of the a data base. Related to San Xingdui, and we talk about page number five. That's quite rich discovery. Page for us, maybe we can expect more surprise today. So compared to the previous days, we've got how that different. Let's go back to the studio there. Back to San Xingdui studio. Welcome back. This is San Xingdui. Excavation Carbon Studio, and I'm with our special guest to give you the, a more the knowledge about our excavation work going on here. And right now we are focusing on this is page number five. 现在是一个提取的，我们现在还没有镜头还没有过来，看不到提取的。So we not really know which piece they are working on, but you can people right now gathering here, and someone doing the recording work. I believe right now is tracking. Oh, I see. The samples. The lady named Li Sifan. You can see this is. The a gold foil and this a gold. 
So talk about technical difficulties when we activating these something. First of all, this is very the a fragile, and we need to be really careful. And also, we should be careful because when I look at the gesture, it's actually not really comfortable for us to working in this kind of the gesture. And before we got the a gold mask, and also the a bird shaped gold foil. So that's quite large. This very stunning piece we got from P number five. So this is a quite smaller one. This is really thin, actually. So it would be really, really soft. Be careful because it's so curved or folded. So maybe that add additional difficulties to our excavation work. And also look at the a lady working inside right now doing the cleaning and sample collecting work. So the lady is Li Sifan. And we could see that the a good for your stripe actually right now is movable. So we should be really patient. So to, from a different angle, from different direction, so you need to lose it first. We can take the soil with it. You cannot really use the A4 to take it. And right now we got it. So thin. So we put it in a box. What can it possibly be? Uh, so it's similar to the golden files because it's very thin. Uh, maybe it's part of the whole piece of uh, artifact. So you can see that we are taking holes. Uh, we are giving a QR code to that strip. So this is the documentation process, well, taking some record and taking some photos. So the photo is taken. So the photo is taken. Our staff still excavating other golden strips and now let's take a look at what is beneath the golden uh, file lay a layer. So this is K5, K5 is actually uh, pit number 5 and it, this is the 145th artifact ex extracted from this piece. So we have different uh, coding system for different pieces of artifacts. Uh, we have uh, big pieces and of course smaller pieces, and they will be coded differently. For big or small, they will be carrying different codes with different initials, and this is just like the initials of your ID. ID number, for example, K5 is the initials of this code, and uh, it tells you that this is from pit number 5, and then it will be put into the laboratory, and uh, we're going to use some uh, hyperspectral uh, scanner to look at the content, composition, and uh, the density of gold. Uh, some have the density of 85%, and uh, the remaining 30% uh, of silver. So they're having a lot of conversation, but we cannot overhear what they are talking about. And maybe they're talking about the next piece of artifact, and they are still talking. <laughs> because the head of this page is not there, so they have to work out a plan. But I believe that there will be interim uh, head of team on site. So gold is the uh, symbol of power. And as we mentioned yesterday and the day before yesterday, so this is a fairly large amount of quantity. In Xi'an, Shang, and Zhou dynasty, this is the place that used 
the largest quantity of gold, and maybe there is a gold mine and gold mountain nearby. And this is also very relevant to the preferences of the uh, king and royal family. And of course, in West Asia and in Egypt, there are also a lot of golden ware excavated, and there is some sort of connection, very likely. But this is something we need strong evidence, for example, the transportation routes and similar artifacts or similar techniques, and you cannot independently come up with something different. So this is pit number four, and we saw a long strip of gold, but you can see that this is a much longer strip, and this is in the shape of V from my angle, and uh, the the top right corner is still buried by earth, and this is quite likely a wind or some ornaments on one edge of the wind. Maybe it's highly likely that uh, it's a wind, and uh, much of it is still covered by the earth, and we can zoom out. Maybe we can see a bird view, and it's highly likely that this is another wind. So the top right corner is almost reaching the bottom of the pit, so it's not likely a wind. So this one is much bigger. If it is not a wind, in pit number one and number two, we have seen some fish-shaped golden file and uh, some other designs and styles. But this one is a lot, bit, a lot uh, narrower, and it's reaching the bottom of the pit. So the top left is already reaching the edges. So this is a V-shaped golden file, and this is P number four. It's a lot similar to P number one, and uh, P number one give us a lot of uh, jade tablets and jade vessels because uh, P number one and number four they are pretty close. Uh, so we have to know how long this. Uh, top right corner is, and so this is not natural. So it's giving us a lot of surprises. So this is the surprise of the day today, and because in at ten o'clock this morning we haven't seen this. There doesn't seem to be any patterns on this strip. Well, this is like 20 centimeters long. On the right side, is that a pottery? Yes, it's the pottery piece. So what is about this round, round object that is popping out from the ground? So I can see it's in a shape of sphere, and uh, we still don't know what that is. <laughs> so how I wish that I was there on site. So this is a ruler, and you can see this is roughly 30 centimeters long. This is a very big discovery. So how can this be? And uh, how long is the part that is still underground? Well, hold your breath and be a little patient. So the golden file excavated from pit number five is already in the lab. Our workers have cleaned that. And now back to my colleague Zhao Xing. So we are right now at the emergence analysis lab, and just now the golden file excavated was transported here, was transferred here. You can see that our researchers are analyzing this golden file and golden strip using hyperspectral scanner, and uh, we are working together with uh, more than 30 scientific institutions and universities 
working on board with us. You can see that this is a hyperspectral scanner provided by the Xi'an uh, Optic uh, Center of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and they have uh, brought this scanner here. And they just scanned this uh, golden valve strip, and uh, from the screen you can see the result of such scanning. Uh, let me ask Dr. Tang, what information can you get from such scanning? So we used the hyperspectral scanner to uh, scan the golden file strip so that we can know what is the hyperspectral information of the piece. By merging and analyzing the data, we are able to obtain a lot of information. And this scanner can be a very good helper to all the archaeologists to help understand the contents of the piece and also to help understand the abnormal uh, contents associated with that piece. And uh, in restoring and repairing this uh, golden strip, we can also use this scanner. And uh, we can analyze the original data so that we can have a very comprehensive understanding about how to preserve and how to further protect this golden strip. We can also compare the hyperspectral data between different uh, golden strips. By comparing the data, we will be able to understand the differences of the golden file strip, and this will help us understand the golden ware used in ancient times in this part of the country. So my understanding, this is like uh, making a ID card for this golden veil, and uh, each and every strip of gold is very unique. Uh, so tell us what are the result of recent research in this perspective. Well, let me show you one of the results of the scanning. And you know that in P number four, about the ivory, and there is this layer of ashes. And uh, these ashes, they came from the burning of uh, plants or textiles at the sacrificial ceremony. So it's very important that we understand the sacrifice ceremony. And so through scanning, we were able to obtain this hyperspectral image of these ashes. And we also analyzed the sampling data of cotton, hemp, wool, and silk contents contained in the earth. If we talk about organic textiles, and it can very easily uh, uh, absorb the hyperspectrums. So through our analysis, we came to the conclusion that a lot of organic elements were contained in the soil. For example, this is a, a squared piece. By scanning that, we found out that this is a remain of hemp. And if we look at this uh, part of the uh, sample, and it's more similar to wool or cotton. So in addition to identifying objects, we can also formulate some images, and uh, we can look at some some of the uh, images of this uh, hyperspectral uh, scanning. So we'll be, we'll be able to understand what kind of uh, object it was. Uh, it might be a uh, piece of clothing. And then it's uh, very useful to understand what potential object it was from. So for hyperspectral scanning, we can better understand the agriculture and textile industry thousands of years ago. So thank you very much, Dr. Tang, for your introduction. We understand that at this round of archaeological research at San Xiangdui, we're using a lot of the scientific and technological tools. So all right, this is the ladies from, from the lab. Back to you, Guangxuan. Thank you very much, Zhao Jing. And we will bring you the latest about what is going on at P number three. And uh, maybe later you will know what is the object that is still buried underground. All right, welcome back to the studio in Beijing. And with the progress going on there on site, we are very curious about what are the artifacts being restored at the preservation center. So tell us what is going on at your lab. So this is the 
Restoration Center, which is only a few kilometers away from the Sanxingdui Relic Center. And uh, we have uh, received different batches of artifacts, and we have witnessed the whole process of restoring and repairing those artifacts. And we gave you a very detailed look about the Golden Fisher Max. And today, let me introduce some of the elements associated to that. In B number five, we excavated a lot of uh, shining pieces of goldenware through a number of days of effort we spent on restoration, and we are now being able to unveil its true look. So, Dr. Wang, tell me, we know this is from P5, and what is it specifically? So, this is a golden ornament in the shape of a bird activated from P5, and you can see that uh, this is the head. And we also have the bird wing and uh, the bird body and the bird tail. So it's very obvious that we have the tail, the body, the wing, and also the head. And this is very similar to the tail of a phoenix. So how big is this? And it appears to be very big from my perspective. So it's 30 centimeters long, and uh, you can see that we have some part missing already it's reaching the width of uh, 18 centimeters so you mentioned about its head and uh, what is the features there well some believe that this is a ornament with the head of a bird and some believe this is a human head and if you look at the uh, look at this piece from uh, using our uh, microscope and you can see that there is one missing part and it's slightly different from uh, uh, manual uh, cutting and maybe it's a very special type of bird. So maybe like you said, maybe this is like a bird shaped or the, a, a human head bird body. Uh, the figure, but from my side, actually, I could really tell that the t eyes and the mouth are it's quite like a people's head because we know P3 actually we found this kind of the a like a human head with a bird body excavation. So we talk about this is actually already folded, right? When you very first time see this. Still remember that time? Yes, actually, it's unearthed, and actually, this is actually overlaid by other a piece of gold and also covered by earth. Before we saw maybe just one piece. After that, you could see actually we folded it and we found maybe it's the a belt or stripped. Actually, look at the shape after it's fully folded. It's really shocking to us. It's so beautiful and look at it. This is a really fun art piece. It's like the a golden phoenix. So we actually and would like to compare to the a uh, foundings from P number one and two, especially the gold wear from there. So compared to gold mask, let's say actually their technique actually more or less the same, but actually this piece is quite complicated, even more complicated, because they need to really show you that the a uh, hollow structures look at this should be really cutting edge technology or technique to make so, and also look at this uh, compared to the a uh, gold mask. This one is even same. And also the technique, especially making these hollow structure right now, actually still passed on. So look at actually with thousand years of history right now, this technique still actually using nowadays. Talk about a gold mask. We talk about the way of processing, especially the edge of a gold mask. We talk about that maybe it's the a cover on top of the wooden mask. So it's like the coating, but for this one, it's so thin. And look at the edge, look at the cutting style. Actually, it's not really as the a uh, topping or like decorating layer. So we talk about it's maybe for the more decoration function of the other wear. So it's waiting for further information. So thin, it's 0 0.12 millimeters. 
And besides this piece, and also look at it, also the uh, look into another piece under the microscope. So the other piece also from the piece number five, and um, based on the early excavation from piece number one and two, actually based on the report, actually we found more or less the similar discoveries from the previous work. So we talk about this, we always name it as the fish-shaped gold ware. So look at it, this is quite like the a fish eye. And also we look at the whole shape, it's like the a fish the hat and also the a gill that's also quite similar. And also we look at the whole decoration or the pattern and we believe this is something actually well arranged. So you look at the dots actually is in an orderly manner. So right now it's not fully folded, but we could really tell there's a fish scale, actually also the a man-made fish scale on top of this gold or the fish-shaped gold folio. Actually, we'll look at the different pieces and also we saw that the gold mask actually during the whole work, anything you expect. Of course, we're looking forward more pieces coming to us, but actually, especially this kind of the a mask, the inv also the missing part, we could find it and we could fill in that gap. I believe we would like to bring that 100% original look to the public. And this is the restoration work and it will be continue to bring the pieces back to bring its original look. I believe with the a cutting edge technology and the different platforms, instruments, tools, and also with all the masters pitching in, we hope that we could know better and more about our previous history. And this is from the laboratory. Thank you so much. We believe that the APC is after restoration that's shining even brighter. And we look at the gold wear and also the gold accessories actually really caught everyone's attention. And in Chengdu, actually, also found a lot of these friend kinds of the uh, gold wares actually shocking the whole world. And this also talk about the story of ancient kingdom of Shu. And I would like to go to Chengdu to our correspondent. And this is at the Jinsha Ruin Museum. And this is in the museum and look at this one. I believe this one already went viral and even more popular nowadays. Actually, we also had a, a short video going on and talk about this gold mask actually crying in that short clip. Actually, before we always talk about this is a well-preserved, the largest one in the history, but with the development or the further excavation work of Sai Xing Dui, actually the curtain unfolded, unveiled right now here in Sai Xing Dui, we could tell uh, even more well-preserved one found there. So this one actually maybe not anymore the a best preserved one uh, but the thing is like this one should not cry because like we help the this gold mask find its peers back then and we talk about indeed gold wear or the gold for you actually with the shining cultural relics we got and at uh, this time I also invite the president of Wang Fang of the museum so first of all please let us know the quantity of the a golden foil we got so so far here is around the 300 pieces so judging from the quantity actually quite a lot about actually just the a top of the iceberg actually you could tell there are even a lot underneath so this is our live streaming. This is our special coverage here with CGTN New Media. And also this morning, we also went to the laboratories and also the a museum. And this is a very special room in the a museum. Actually, this is something not really available or accessible to the public. And we talk about this is another piece of the gold mask. And we could tell actually we have seen so many masks. So which means that mask should be play a key role in the ancient kingdom of Shu. So back to 1986, we got 65 gold ware. Uh, in Jinsha, this is the worship places, so we found an additional 300 gold folio or gold pieces. So based on our preliminary research, we talk about it should be related to ritual activities. 
So we look at this as well as through the a different process. This is really thin. Uh, so we talk about this should not just stand by itself. So either like it should be stick to other item. So maybe stick to the wooden, be a product, or maybe these also adhere to the a other like the a jade. And for the worship purpose, and you can see this is very thin. But we talk about the a ancient king kingdom of Shu. They had really nice the a brown ware, but on top of these brown ware, the a people also add additional layer of gold. And also look at this one. And we talk this the a sun and a pearl bird. So actually, we did a lot of work in repairing process. So this is also made by gold, and we look at the a diameter is twelve point five centimeters, and the thickness is around that zero point two or zero point zero two centimeter. So we talk about actually judging from the a thinness, this should be. Own the a cutting edge technique, and also we talk about it's not a simple way to make this. Actually, it's involved quite a difficult process to make this very thin piece. We talk about the diameter is twelve point five centimeters and the thickness around zero point two millimeter. So just think about this. This the so thin, but actually the a gold cut. Meant around ninety two percent. So just within the twelve point five centimeter round, actually is really shining to us. And we also look at actually four and per or the a the a gold bird actually flying at each side. And in the middle is like a twelve sunlight shining in the middle, and this represent the respect of the people in the, the ancient kingdom of Shu to the sun. And actually, we always can see this kind of a message from other excavated pieces, and this is something shared among different civilization. So this one actually become the a one of the icon of Chengdu and also of the a Shu ancient Shu kingdom. So we talk or look at our palm, a, a dot palm actually just like the a size of this one. So just on your palm, they have this sophisticated work. So we could tell this is really hard to make it, but people in ancient time they could own it. Another piece I would like to highlight here. So maybe give it a close shot first. So this is a belt. We talk about this is the a crowned belt, and it's. We don't know whether we could see that the a pattern on top of it. We could find the pattern of fish, bird, and wand. I believe this is some element actually we usually found from San Xingdui excavation work, right? Remember that we talk about the a gold wand from San Xingdui, repeat number one, actually a human being's face and the a wand, the fish, a bird. They maybe belong to one family, but we would like to know that the combination of the pattern, what's the meaning behind? So we talk about these four pattern and these a core elements. We only saw this before in San Xingdui and also in Jinsha. So we talk about one arrow, one human being's face, one bird, one fish. So maybe it represents certain two tu totem. So that totem may be representing the a higher class or the a nobility, the a strong power. 
So we believe that maybe belong to one tribe. So that's the a pattern that may be related to certain noble totem. So we talk about the uh, people should belong to one tribe. So when they do the a uh, worship or the uh, ritual activities, they could use this kind of totem or the pattern. And for the people from other tribe, they were not allowed to use this kind of tribe. Of course, the excavation was still going on. We believe that more and more goldware or the uh, cultural relics will be found. And during these days, we talk about whether we could find more of these kind of pattern because it's not character, it's not letter, but actually all these pattern help us to know more about these activities or the secret. Actually, it's a decoding work. So with more of these kind of pattern found, that help us to know more about the history and the culture of the ancient Shu kingdom. So this is our love coverage from this Jinsha Ruin Museum and back to the Beijing studio. Thank you very much. So we talk about when was the time started to use this gold wire. Actually, there is no the a clear record in this regard. But based on the record, actually people have that the a development of the knowledge to know more about gold, and we could find that. We rely on the producing of the tools, and from the very beginning, we just the use the a stone, and later on, we burn soil to make the a pottery. Actually. It's Use quite a long time to develop to the stage of the metal, and also later on, we could see that the a whole thing speed up, and we could find the two natural the a metal one is the a copper, another one is gold. If we can find the ideal for the light, actually, you do not need to have a complicated process. By heating and uh, patting that, it will be usable. And in China's The Book of Mountains and Sea, there are red gold and uh, yellow gold. And according to this book, it says that uh, at the Tangting Mountain, there are wood and uh, chimpanzees and jade and gold. And in New Yang Mountain, we have uh, red gold and white gold. And so as for what specific gold categories this book was talking about, we still don't know. And uh, But this book is about mas uh, mas uh, But Even in this book of mythology, there is uh, abundant mentioning of gold. And it, this shows that the Chinese people started to understand gold from a long time ago. And in San Xingdui and also in Jinshao, we have a lot of uh, artifacts in gold. For example, golden white, golden uh, facial mask, golden comb, and also uh, golden ornaments and bearing in mind that all of uh, this uh, golden ware are made of a uh, golden file and golden file is a very thin plate made of gold and the gold is very elastic and uh, 10 grams of uh, gold can be extended to a golden file uh, that is 12.1 uh, square centimeters and uh, starting from ancient times there were abundant understanding about gold and in Western Zhou dynasty there were also some golden fell and uh, in Shanxi province we excavated two pieces of golden f um, tiger we also excavated 26 pieces of uh, cloud patent golden file and two pieces of golden file carved with uh, a beast and in Xingxian, in Xingxian, we excavated a tomb from uh, Western Zhou Dynasty. They are of the length of 2.8 centimeters long and uh, 2.6 meters uh, centimeters wide. On both sides of the Golden Fowl, there are very delicate patterns uh, describing the shape of animals. And in China's uh, Qin Dynasty, uh, we have. Uh, Ancient Chinese uh, phrases that contain contain the word of uh, gold. So you can see that uh, in the historical period before Qin Dynasty, there were methodologies to manufacture gold. And if we add other elements to copper, we can come up with some other bronze ware. In our studio, we have with us. Shi Jingsun, who is a 
archaeologist from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. So in Sanxingdu and also in Jinshan, we excavated a lot of golden ware, but we know that in the same historical period in the Central Plain area, golden ware was seldom um, excavated in China. So what is your take on this? In Sanxingdu and in Jinshan, we really had a lot of uh, excavations about gold and uh, in China's northwest ancient people started to use gold to make some ornaments and maybe this is affected by the civilization on the grassland and in a historical period before Qin Dynasty we had a lot of excavations of gold for example in Gansu in Gansu Shehua Shao relic sites we excavated a golden piece from 3000 years ago most of these are golden rings and other ornaments, which is quite different from the golden file excavated from uh, Sanxingdui and Jinsha. And in Sanxingdui and Jinsha, most of the golden ware and golden ornaments that we excavated, they represent power. Well, you said they represent power. That reminds me of the golden wine excavated from peach wine. Does that represent the power of the king? Well, it is generally believed that the golden wine represents power because number one, it's made of gold, and number two, it's a wine. And we believe this is a symbol of imperial uh, power. And there are many evidences, for example, in P number two, we also excavated some um, bronze. Uh, figure and that may be also associated to power and in Jinsha we excavated a golden crown and golden belt which carried the same pattern with the one excavated in San Xingdu. Maybe they represent power. And you talked about the pattern of fish and bird and uh, we saw that from the restoration center at San Xingdu and uh, you saw that uh, we have golden ornaments made of the shape of uh, fish and bird. Why these two animals, they are uh, uh, reflected in the golden ware excavated in Shanxing Dui and the Jinsha. In the golden wine and the golden ornaments, fish and uh, bird, maybe they represent different tribes, but the Sun god bird has a lot to do with the worship of sun, and uh, as you know that in Sanxingdun, there were a lot of similar discoveries. Maybe in the eyes of the ancient people, the birds, they fly with the sun, so they associate the two together. They build a lot of connections between these two, and they worship the bird and the sun. And some say Yu Fu is the first king of the ancient Shu uh, kingdom, and maybe this is somewhat connected. And there is a lot of uh, worship for bird and uh, a fish. Bird and fish they mean different things, and different ornaments. For example, if we talk about the sun god, uh, of course, at the very center of the ring we have a bird, and of course the bird and the sun they are associated. So I see that you are very strict when reaching a conclusion. Stay tuned.
这里是三星堆新发现特别节目，在这一次新发掘的六个坑当中啊，考古人员在三号坑发现了不同铜器，包括带有 relic in pit number three. We excavated a lot of bronzeware, and this includes a bronze vessel, a bronze utensil, and many other bronze wares. And what are the new discoveries in pit number three? Now let's get connected with our studio in Sanxingdun. All right, welcome back. I'm joined by the director of the Chinese Academy of Archaeology, Mr. Wang Wei, and Dr. Ma Yunchao. Now please follow our camera and let's move to pitch number three. You can see our two staff. They are cleaning the earth in the pitch. Yesterday we excavated a very large bronze utensil, and this is the largest of such bronze we are excavated because it's 70 centimeters tall. And what is beneath this bronze utensil? Now let's take a look. You can see that it's very bright, and this is a long strip of an utensil, and we don't know what that is. Maybe it was uh, broken because of the pressure. Maybe it was uh, pressurized and that's how it's flat. So you can see this is in Chinese a lay or zun. But you can tell that this is flattened and maybe some heavy pieces fell on it and it was broken. On the left, on the left of the screen, we can see a lot of uh, shells and maybe the shells were contained in that utensil. So this tells us that maybe this is a very large bronze utensil or a bronze container. <laughs> Looking at this part only, and this is just like a pedal of a boat, but we understand that there is a the big chunk of that still buried underground, and on the right side, we can see a elephant tusk. They're using bamboo shovels and brush. So the uh, darker colored part is the utensil. So it's very hard to distinguish, and we have to wait to the for their clean up the earth because they are at different levels of corrosion. And maybe this is bronze. Maybe this is gold. And uh, if it is green color, it's highly likely that it's bronze. We've seen some crack, but you can still see those uh, very delicate patterns on the surface. So our staff is using the bamboo shovel to uh, clean up the dirt. All the rest of the page is covered by wet tissues uh, and wet towels. and. Uh, now you can take a look at the left corner of this footage. So this is highly likely a bronze human figure. At the very beginning we saw the bronze head. Now it seems to be a human figure. And we saw the two hands putting together. We also saw the body. And at the very center of this footage you saw a elephant tusk that is lying on top of the body and uh, on the left side of the human figure we can see a bronze utensil and you can imagine this is very tall maybe 1.15 uh, centimeters uh, 1.5 meters but this is a very large piece it was seldomly uh, it was seldom seen in the past and we can also see a dragon head, which is highly likely attached to this utensil. 
So you can take a look at this angle. Uh, you can see very clearly the dragon head. And you can also see the horns of ox, which is symmetrical. And on each side, we have a ox head. So they are at the four different corners of this bronze utensil. Originally, we thought that uh, those are the supporters, but right now you can see that uh, those animal beasts and sculptures they are on top of this utensil. And maybe this is just a utensil they used at the sacrificial ceremony, and uh, you can see the part at the neck part. We saw some crack, and then if we put it upside down, you can see how it looks like. The green colored one is the bronze ear. You can see the face is uh, facing down the bottom. So you can see that this is a very large uh, Chinese string. So this is maybe larger than a bronze string that we excavated yesterday. So this is the eye. You can see that his face is facing down and this is just a section view of this head sculpture. And this is quite different. And this is the year. And uh, you can see it's very big. And it's equivalent to the size of a real human figure. On the right side, you can see we have very delicate carvings on the surface. And this is quite similar to the bronze ware excavated from Shang and Zhou dynasty. And this is very typical in terms of the style, and you can see that uh, the overall uh, style uh, is quite unique in ancient Shu Kingdom. So you look at the people actually holding that. So we talk about actually the uh, whole worship offerings, why we found this kind of zun. And we look at this is the eyeball. And also we could see that we talk oh, the people from the ancient ancient Shu kingdom actually they really that eager to have this kind of a, the a bulging eyes, really the big eyes. I hope that with this large size of eyes had helped them to really see through the clouds and directly to the truth. So this is pit number three. We talk about this is the whole zun. We're looking forward the whole piece unveiled in front of us, especially after repairing. So look at the hands. So this is both hands. Together, I believe this is crossing the hand. Maybe it's a hole because it is a round shape. And maybe holding the ivory, maybe. And because before we also found another large size, the figure that also more or less the same hand gesture. So the a brown wear actually also showed the, a very important level of the a pro size, and because it's need the a different like heating, actual rating. Actually, this the a very complicated process. So we couldn't really tell that this is required a large investment of resources, humans, and of course it represents the a power and the a nobility. And I'll talk about a lot of process actually involved more people, and and this is also involved the a quite big organization system. So we talk about the a nobility or power actually the a must to make this and as it also showed the high level of civilization we talk about either it's the a standing position or the a knees on the ground position this is something we're waiting to see and also we talk about before we found the a similar excavation piece before this is maybe the standing position like this is the one we got before and also it's not really have the a one like the a similar size. So look at on the left hand side is the a standing the position where uh, the head is missing and the people in the middle is knees on the ground. So look at the holding zoom on top of the head. 
So this is more like the a mountain or the warship platform, and then the other one maybe is quite similar to this one. So we look at the hand gesture is quite similar, and this is like the a crossing the hand. And we talk about this is maybe holding something thin, maybe ivory, so it's not the jar or the large vessel. So right now we guess it could be a ivory because it's a holding the hands crossing together. So this is the one we're waiting to see, and in the middle actually the one uh, holding, and the other one. We saw that it should be a dynamic one, and uh, maybe the fire could be burning inside. So this is actually for the a high level pressed, and this is from pit number two, and this animal on the earth, the a uh, release. So we talk about they actually put the a dragon on under. And they also show that it maybe could fly higher. And also we could see the four people in the middle. And on top of their head, actually, that's the Zun. And also see the birds shaped decoration on top. And this one is really that the a smaller one. And we talk about this is around the a 53 cent the centimeters tall. But the one we are looking forward, actually, this is around 1.15 meters tall. So we are so excited to see the finished work of this Zun. I believe this is one of the very important symbol in the ancient Shu kingdom. So at this ritual work, actually, we saw a lot of different kinds of the activities. And before we saw that really large size, the a bronze, the a standing figure so that may be the a representing the king or the a min pressed. So when we need this kind of large size figure, or we had this the a scenario of the a worship to do the virtual activities. Actually, in different places, different civilization, different culture, they have their own features. Here we talk about the a status of the a mean a price should be really high. That because the a priest represent the god, the god, because we always talk about the a priest actually they could talk to God. And this one, actually, the simulation, uh, this one, you look at, this is actually quite well known in San Xingdui, it's around 1.72 centimeters for the human gesture in total is around 2.06 meters high. And this actually look at is a three stairs and on top of these stairs, actually, this is the a press on top. Basically, this actually help us to know a little bit more about the a ritual work. So this is bring that the a holy feeling. So we don't know it's actually the whole activity will held in this kind of the open space outdoor or in a certain temple. So maybe they had the temple built, but actually our simulation right now, because we are right now studios in this place, so we also have this simulation here next to us in this open space. So we talk about the silk product, actually. We look at this one, actually has three layers of silk. So maybe with really that the a premium closet decorated with silk, but that's also demonstrated the a well developed the a way of making silk. So we talk about the brownware actually represented the a quite advanced development and the technology in this regard. And we know actually the process of making brownware I will talk about the a prosperity of the whole ancient Shu kingdom because it involved a quite large investment in terms of resources and headcount. We hope that with more work going on and help us to know more about the secret of San Xingdui. Uh, back to the Beijing studio. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Beijing. Just now, we saw that in P3, there were a good mask actually face down inside 
They paid number three at the same time in the middle area of the Yangtze River and also the A Brown, the kingdom in Jiangxi. Actually, we found a kingdom that's 3,000 years ago, and we found the, a large number of brown ware there. So let's go into this secret brown ware. And look at this one, actually, is the a highest class of the a national cultural relics, and it's the very first piece we found. This is a both size mask. So we talk about this, actually, the most featured, the a human figure mask. Actually, this actually won a lot of respect. Actually, we also found a different DA mask, so that also help us to know more about each other. And also found these two horns uh, to add additional DA self-developed culture. So compared to the Inchi Hom and the Sanxin Dui, actually in total, this is called the DA three DA cluster of DA brown ware. So talk about the a central plain culture. That's something similar, but also represented the a different culture. But we talk about actually the a central plain culture already passed on to the southern part of the whole territory, and we see these the different kinds of the a bronze ware that involve the instruments, musical instruments, and also the tools for agriculture. We look at these different the animals. The a brown ware actually always shows that 3,000 years ago in Poyang Lake area, so these people own quite the economy of technology in making brown ware. So there's something similar to the a central plain culture, but also it has own feature. So we look at, of course, different places that develop its own featured the a culture and the a technique in making the a brown one, but the similarity among different brown one from different places also show that they actually reinforce and also learning from each other. So in Shanxi, we had a specific brownware museum that actually showed the a brownware found at a similar age of Sanxingdui. So let's know more about the history back then. So this is the Asian the Shanxi, and this is the a brownware the museum, and is from Shang Dynasty. So here we found one piece of the cultural relics with quite eye-catching shape. So it's like the a small shape or the a dragon boat. So that's why we call it the a dragon shaped boat. It's also the national highest level uh, the cultural relic. To help you to understand more the a fine details, and we actually have this the a duplicate work. So look at actually can be divided into two pieces. So look at this is a hollow inner. So basically you have a leak lead on top. And basically, you put one inside, and also like to the can really get the one from the mouth of the or the a small open at the front, and also the lead actually so help you look at the a curve and this also a little bit holy shape here. So when you the, the a make the one actually make the air flowing inside. So we look at this, the a pattern design actually has been parallel. So I believe that the a design philosophy is quite similar compared to the a brown wares in the issue culture. And it's also in the different pieces, actually, you look at the a patterns and the a the alligator. alligator. And also the other one is the a head up, the a dragon shape. And also from the a head to the tail is always can find that the a dragon pattern. So we look at there are the a four different the nodes where the it's kind of the a holy shape. So basically you could see the holy f in the middle actually can put the a rope inside and help her to carry. Well, Mr. Han, this is for the, the food container. 
So this is called a bu in Chinese, actually. Also the wine container. You look at the pattern, actually, with the A3 animal hat. And also divide into three parts. So you look at that. This is quite the a elegant, and also talk about the patterns from the look. Actually, look at this. Also like the S three D features on the top for the pattern. So this is actually the pure feature from the Insu culture. This is called Wu Nao. So there are a lot of rings decorated in the both sides, and for these actually the musical instrument. And oh, this one. This is also the a knife or the a army usage. So this is the we talk about the nomadic cultures. I found that this is also the a boarding areas. So found that this is the a cultures getting together merged here. So some actually the from the a nomadism. Cultures and some from the a central plain culture. So look at all these Chinese characters. You familiar with all these, or can you really speak them in Chinese? We talk about actually this represent the cultural relics, and sometimes we may encounter to these kind of the Chinese characters, and these characters actually related to the Chinese culture, and also we talk about this Chinese the a uh, cultural relics. So you need to look into the dictionary to know exactly how they pronounce in Chinese. So let's figure out. And how people really use this tool. Thousands of years ago, and,、uh, this one is very chubby, and it has three supporters.、Uh, is it holding? Meat porridge. Yes, you're right. This is a part. This is a part from thousands of years ago, and this is what the Chinese people call ding. At the very beginning, it was made by pottery. Then it has two handles. In Xia Dynasty, we have a bronze ding, but still we are using three supporters at the bottom. And then we have this four supporter, four feet ding, and gradually it has evolved from a、uh, life-related utensil to sacrificial sacrificial order. And it now represents power, and、uh, it is believed that uh, uh, altogether nine things were、um, manufactured in China. For example, in China, when setting a capital, we see setting a ding. So ding also represents power, and、uh, in the historical in history textbook,、uh, we all have learned the homu wu、uh, pottery ding, and、uh, we also have. Li, differently, the three feet are hollow in in the center, and it's more efficient in cooking. And in southern part of China, we also have a zheng. Zheng has a hollow bottom, so it's for the steams to、uh, pass through. And so this is like a steaming、um, pot. So when you put zheng and li, so. For the li,、uh, it can be put at the bottom, and you can put firewood beneath, and then you can form a complete piece of、uh, pot. And we also have yan, and、uh, these are three pots excavated from the Fu Hao tomb in Henan Province. For a banquet to be successful, you have to have wine, and the ancient Chinese they used jun as a container of wine.、And、if you look at the Chinese character of jun, it's two hands holding a pot of wine. So in Li Bai's poems, it was written that when you are happy, you have to drink wine; otherwise, you are wasting、um, the jun. The jun is a very important utensil in ancient China, so that is why in China we have a lot of phrases, phrases and terms using the character jun. And now let's take a look at jue. Jue is like a scanner that we use today in bars, and it, you can warm that, and it looks like a wine glass, but it has a head. It also has a tail and a handle. For wine containers, we have jun and jue, and also lei. And also gong, just like this. In China, we have a phrase that goes as gong and chou, which means that、uh, 
uh, people are having a good time at the dinner. And those are the Bodhuri Gong and Chou excavated from Er Li Tou. Now let's just uh, put up the uh, glasses and uh, bottom up. Now we have with us Shi Jing Song from the Chinese Academy of Archaeology. So Professor Shi is a expert in pottery, especially for the period of Shang and Zhou dynasty. And uh, we, we've seen a short video clip about the different pottery and bronze utensils. And you have noticed that amongst the artifacts excavated in San Hindu, we have seen a lot of Zhen, but we haven't seen a Ding. What is your take on this? In San Hindu, we don't have Ding. And uh, in the Shang dynasty, we have uh, Guo and Jia, but those were not excavated in San Hindu. In the central plain area, we have a wide variety of different pottery and uh, bronze ut uh, utensils. But in San Hindu, it was very limited in terms of type. And this is also similar in other parts of China. For example, in Jiangxi Xingan, we found a big tomb, and uh, we've ha we have excavated a lot of uh, uh, bronze wares, but we don't have Gu and Jia. And uh, in the Yangtze River, we have Jun and Lei. Both are wine containers and utensils. So those are regional bronze cultures. You can see that well, making exchanges with the Shang dynasty culture, there are some limitations. And some of the times, they have selected some of the utensils from the central plain area, but they are attaching new functions to that. So what kind of new functions have they given to the bronze ware? Well, to just give you an example, Zun, for example, in the central plain area, it was called it was for one containing purposes, but in San Xingdu, it was for sacrifi sacrificial ceremonies. Yes, you're right. In central plain area, it was for ritual purposes, and you mentioned about this big round um, port. And what is the difference between the Zun discovered in San Xingdu and also in central plain area in terms of the pattern and design? The San Xingdu um, big pot, it's a round uh, bronze uh, pot, and it carries a lot of uh, patterns. And this is similar to the Zun used in the central plain area. For example, in Yin, Xu, Yin ruins, we have uh, characters at the bottom. And uh, if you look at the medium part, it's very thin. And normally, it's very short. And uh, if you look at the patterns, it's mainly reflecting some animals. But if you look at the patterns on San Xingdui, they don't carry any characters. And a lot of that are very tall, and the arms they are holding together. And if you look at the patterns, the, there are some unique features in uh, in its mouth and also in its face, which are quite different from the patterns in the central plain area. Up until present, um, the bronze were excavated from San Xingdu, and there are no words or characters. And do you think it's likely that for the other bronze wares excavated uh, later, there will be no words or characters? Well, so far we haven't encountered any inscriptions or words on the surface of the bronze ware. And this is not just unique in San Xingdu and in a central, in addition to the central areas of Shang Dynasty, all the bronze ware excavated in other localities have no such characters. And this shows that characters were used only at the limited area in Shang Dynasty. So after seeing this very big bronze utensil, some say that it's very similar and identical to the Zun excavated in Yin ruins in Henan province. And you mentioned that there were a lot of cultural exchanges. But right now, can you tell us where does this bronze making technology come from? Is it from the central plain area in China? So number one, in San Xingdu, we haven't encountered a lot of similar joints from 
uh, to the uh, yin ruins. So we have to dramatically increase our knowledge with the passage of time. And I believe there is a very limited channel of technological transfer, and we can only look at the geological roots. And one of the possibilities is China's northwest, because in China's northwest, we have excavated some bronze plates, and we believe they are from the uh, Hexi Corridor, and that was the place where they had the refinery um, industry from a very long time ago. And maybe there is the route from China's northwest, and the other route might be the Central Plain area. So in Sanxingdui, and judging by its bronzeware, what is your evaluation on the overall level of civilization in Sanxing? Do you think there was the kingdom, a country, at the present because they could come up with such delicate and bronzeware? Well, I believe there was a country at the time because to produce so many bronzeware, you need refinery, you need uh, mining industry, you also need to uh, manufacture that and also carry out researches. You also need to have a special an administrative organ to oversee this manufacturing manufacturing process. So that means that it has to have a country to manufacture so many bronzeware. All right, stay tuned. Some believe that archaeologists they must be historians and they have to have very good knowledge in history and they also need to be a detective. They should be know where the artifact was buried and also identify the historical period of that. And they also need to be uh, anthropologists and because they have to have a lot of a lot of understanding about human and also they have to be a uh, vegetarian or. Uh, uh, veteran or a doctor, they need to have a biological knowledge about humans and animals. In addition to elephant tusks in 1986 in page number one and number two, we excavated a lot of uh, animal-shaped pottery and bronzeware. Now let's take a look at a lot of the bird-shaped utensils. In 1986, one big bird head bronzeware was excavated, and this is 40 meters tall, and you can see that the eyes are popping out, and the uh, mouth uh, is uh, curved according to experts. Uh, this is uh, one of the eagles that feed on fish. And in Sanxingdui, there were a lot of rivers, and those uh, fish gall was very prevalent in that place, and they played a very important role in agriculture. And uh, the Sanxingdui people came up with abstract artistic. Uh, uh, utensils in the shape of birds, and they also have many other um, bird shapes. Some are flying, some have very beautiful crowns, and some have very beautiful uh, beaks. So seeing these uh, birds-shaped utensils, it's, it seems as if that we could hear the tweets of birds. And that offers a clue for us to understand the bird species 3,000 years ago in Sanxingdui. Now let's take a look at a bronze roaster in Sanxingdui. You can take a look at how layered the leathers, the feathers are, and you can see how delicate and vivid the mouth, the eyes, and the crown is. So this shows us how artistic the Sanxingdui people were. In addition to birds, we also excavated a lot of utensils in the shape of pig, eagle, and dog, and also frog. Although they are not very big, but they are very delicate. People in Sanxingdui, they were using earth to make pottery, and they showed us a very vivid world from a long time ago, and in 2000, at eight, a kilometer, eight kilometer away from uh, Sanxingdui, they found another uh, relic site in Lianhua, and one of the pottery uh, peak piece 
attract the attention of archaeologists. And you can take a look at the pig nose and pig face. And this is very similar to the cartoon character because the similarity between the cartoon figure and this one also went viral online. Uh, it took thousands of years before the world is like what it's like today. And thanks to the archaeological findings, we are able to understand better about the history. And also, we have experts on animal who research into the bones of animals. And in their eyes, each bone can tell a story. And this year, we identified a lot of elephant tusks. And what secrets can the archaeologists tell us from those ivory? At the archaeological sites, there are animal experts collecting different types of bones. By analyzing the bones, they will be able to tell the age, size, and species of the bone. And in 1986, in pit 1 and pit 2, we excavated 80 elephant tusks. In 2000, in Chengdu, we put together more than 100 elephant tusks, and the longest one exceeded 1.85 meters. And according to analysis, the expert told us that told us that the uh, elephant lived in Asia from thousands of years ago. And according to experts, in today's uh, time, uh, the Asian elephants have shorter chunks. Do we have elephants 3,000 years ago in San Xindui? The experts are telling us that it's highly likely. And in the Yangtze River Basin, there are also elephant tusks. In 1976, some farmers identified a very big chunk of fossil, and uh, the experts told us that uh, they are the bones from an elephant. And the ivory is around uh, two meters long, and we talk about this is quite frequently seen, so also the sharp teeth elephant. And we also found that 100 TA pieces of the a bone from the feet, and it's all well preserved. And we also talk about a bone from the tongue also found. And also this is later on named as the a Yellow River elephant. So the ethnologists actually found the from the different remains or bones actually tell us the whole story of the animals living back then. And these piece actually is also the every related the a item and actually on top of that we could find the a sunlight and also the birds and we talk about this respect the a people actually show their respect to the sun and the birds. And also we found that these actually always can find the a wand and this wand actually made into this shape and it's also used the every to use make this wand and as it also show the a hierarchy back then and this one you look at the a green colors on top and also the whole shape and this always represents this to be loved by the imperial family. So let's get back to the studio in San Xindui. And I believe there's questions from the internet. We'd like the experts to give an answer to them. Yes, indeed, we have collected the questions regarding the excavation work going on here in San Xindui and also related to culture and history here in San Xindui. So we found some questions online. Let's see what we have today. And also we ask Mr. Wang Wei to give us the answer. So we had four questions, and Mr. Wang Wei is the chairman of the Archaeologist Society of China. So we talk about actually we found different kinds or different shape, different size of the birds, which also means that quite abundant birds resources 3,000 years ago. The answer is absolute yes, because we see a quite advanced development in agriculture sector. Actually, we talk about the whole temperature actually is the two to three degrees. Celsius higher than the current temperature, so we could see yes, we could see more the accounts of birds, and of course we see maybe more birds flying there, and of course that's also related to the rally. 
So that's related to the belief. We look at the ASOS was the coastal areas. We talk about birds because they fly. So in the ancient time, people talked about eternal that the a uh, their spirit actually is to the other the a uh, uh, to the heaven or to another world. So birds are actually really a vehicle or the way to transport the spirit of the disease to the heaven. So we talk about the San Xing Dui here. We talk about the brown wear. We relate to the central plain culture, something is common. And also at the top of that is the San Xing Dui's own specific feature, especially decorated with all these birds. So we look at Bai Guan, Yu Fu, and Du Yu. Actually, in their name, they are related to birds. Actually, these are the names of the three kings in the ancient kingdom of Shu. So we still talk about this related to the ancient culture and the history. So we talk about that related to to time, that respect to the sun, respect to the birds, because we talk about the holy birds. Actually, it's not just simple normal birds; it's holy birds. So another question we talk about the apeat. Why is so well organized? So we talk about right now we have eight peats. They quite close to each other. So we talk about it. Actually, we dig in this size, right? Actually, we excavate it in this size. But also talk about actually we not really did in hurry. Actually, we had a well plan. Before and also we know exactly the distance between two sides, two pits. Actually, everything based on our plan. So indeed, actually the pits actually made by us is not the original pit back then. So for our archaeological work, of course, we would like to show the original look. So of course, we will not really damage the original look. We follow the a uh, original pattern. And also on top of that, we have our plan. So let's look into another question: whether it's possible to repair silk product. So let's say we found the head, but the body missing. Whether we can repair or made the whole body or the a uh, clothes. We'll talk about whether we can repair that silk. So we talk about the silk. Of course, that may be something that, that missing or damaged so with the a uh, microscope and also the other detector. So we could know what kind of silk it was. And also we could tell that the structure. We talk about the uh, cotton wool and also we talk about the uh, woven silk and also the different the a silk family. So first we need to identify what kind of silk it was. And right now actually we had that technology, we had a specific team working on these areas. So actually the team actually the from the messy silk collection to do the repairing work. We had a dedicated team in this area. So we talk about the unearthed silk. I believe the team actually capable to do so. So actually, we talk about archaeological work. Actually, from day one to the destination, actually involved so complicated process and involved multiple team involved. So let's also looking forward that tomorrow we could find more silk, and also hope that we can bring the orange look and touch. And also tomorrow in our live streaming, we'll focus more on the a secret, the a utensils and. In the pit number eight, we talk about before the have big reaction to the a metal detectors. So we're looking forward any metal wares that could be found, and also we will do some the research at the outer space or the a space surrounding in near the pits. So let's looking forward for the more excavation work tomorrow. Thank you very much, our studio in San Xing Dui. So back to our Beijing studio. So so far, actually, for the us, we just know it's just a word. It's another piece. But from the archaeological perspective, each and every tiny piece could tell a different story, or they embed it with a story. So as you said before, with the analysis on all these cultural relics and also the ruins, actually, that help us to identify that back then, 
At the later age of Shang Dynasty, actually already show the a whole system of a country or nation. We talk about at the same time actually along the Yangtze River did they also exist that the a other brown wear culture. We also found that the a tri the a tribe and also the a other ruins, but based on the layout of the ruins or the a excavation, we could really talk about the hierarchy of the whole society. We look at the brown wear actually all more or less from one pit. And we also look at the Xiangjiang riches. Actually, we also found a quite large number of brown wear. Actually, that brown wear is so complicated, and the shape, the look, actually quite different. We could not really tell that a unified society already existed. And also, the archaeological work actually also not quite found abundant. Cultural relics. So far, based on our knowledge, in Chengdu Plain, we found the earliest shape of nation. So, based on our new discovery this time from Song Xindui, what's the importance? This time, so first of all, it's for sure help us to know more about San Xingdui culture and the civilization. Help us to find the answers to many the uh, original questions. Of course, that also help us to ask more questions, so that also widen our horizon and understanding of the San Xingdui culture, and also actually this provide a larger space for us to look into the San Xingdui culture from different angles. And I believe that also help us to. Build up that link to different culture or civilization in other places and the same time or same age, and also we talk about we can enrich the data space and also for the whole area or the Yangtze River civilization actually also can know more about its own culture and the history based on the San Xingdui. Founding, we talk about a culture or the a brown wear. Actually, the a index for us to know the a history and culture. We talk about every piece of the soil, sand, and also the ivory. Actually, the a landmark to guide us away. Actually, these actually like the a jigsaw puzzle. Actually, we find. Build up and fill in the H P's to help us understand the beauty of the A Chinese civilization. So the A new technology plus the A cultural relics help us to understand the whole history how the Chinese civilization developed, and also because of these kind of the work and also the A belief, the archaeological work actually show its vivid dynamics and also that show the A beauty. And the resilience of the Chinese civilization, Yin Xu culture to the San Xingdui culture. So the excavation work right now is everything follow the schedule, with each and every piece is unfilled, unfolded, and unveiled its curtain. It show its own bride in front of us. And this is coming to the end of our live coverage. I see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.